as a broken guitar. My name's Daniel and I customise guitars under the name Devil and Sons. So on the website it's sort of sold as Devil and Sons, guitars you'll sell your soul for. I kind of like the idea of, yeah, I like the idea of that kind of Robert Johnson idea of going down to the crossroads to learn to play. And I know for a lot of people what the guitar looks like is sometimes as important when you're picking an instrument as to what it actually sounds like. I was talking to um, someone earlier about the idea that the guitar you're playing, what it looks like, what it feels like, can change the way you're playing as well and change your mood on stage. So basically at the moment, uh, I've been making guitars for about three years, but only for the last six months tried to set it up as a business. My background before then is as an artist, so I used to make quite conceptual drawings and also paintings of cities, and I got a bit fed up making artwork to hang on walls. I wanted to make things people could actually use. And as someone that's been in bands for a few years, I always used to sort of customise my own guitars and basses. So I play bass, really, not guitar. And so I wanted to move into making an object that someone can play that is an artwork, but also maybe that they might want to hang on the wall. So at the moment, I'm doing things like this. I decided if I'm going to make guitars or customise guitars, I need to do it for my own pleasure. And I'm really into science fiction. So... Um, what I'm doing is taking guitars that I already like the look of and like the sound of and trying to f change the body in some way, sculpt the body, so you can still play them so that they're still completely pl playable. But, um, so I'm doing three real different types of things at the moment. One is making guitars which are one-offs, which I feel could be maybe artworks as well as playable, that at the moment have a science fiction or movie link and maybe would appeal to that. As someone has pointed out, Star Wars is coming up soon. I've got some photos I'll show you, but you may have seen that meme that goes round about the Millennium Falcon with the um, that's turned into a bass guitar and the phrase, this is the bass you've been looking for. But I've been making those as well, so I think you just about see it on there. Can I turn it like that? So using, using the same toys I had as a child. So these are... This one's from 1970, oh, the original ones are from 1979. Uh, I think this one might be a 1990s guitar, uh, inch, uh, toy. So that's one thing I'm doing. The other thing I'm doing is trying to make things that are more like uh, additions that can be uh, produced more than, more than one of. So I've got this, which seems to be something that people like at the moment, which I've made, this is the sixth one I've made. Um, they're made to look smashed. But they play. They still play properly. Maybe someone afterwards will want to try it. But um, one thing I quite like about these is I've been lucky that I had a bit of coverage on a couple of guitar magazines with these. And when they're online, you get lots of people discussing on the threads what they think about them. So some of you will know that there's a thing called relicking on guitars, which is where people buy guitars that have been made to look old and used. And there's a big debate. Some people really feel this is the wrong thing to do. If you've got a guitar that looks old and used, it should be because it's old and used. But, but then people, you know, it's really fashionable at the moment to buy vintage furniture and old furniture, and it's not been used by you necessarily. So Fender and Gibson all make relict guitars that are faked to look old. And I wanted to really take that to an extreme. So uh, <laughs> there's no way in any way this is what it would actually look like if it had been damaged. Because I put a lot of, like, when I break, it, break the wood, I then paint into it to emphasise. It's when you're looking at it from someone playing on stage, it would definitely look more broken. So I try and make things a bit off-centre. So it's not a natural relicking look. But a lot of people really hate these online because they feel I've taken what they don't like already to the biggest extreme. <laughs> and then at the same time, you, I see people arguing my case, saying, you're an idiot for thinking that. Everyone has their own taste. Everyone likes their own thing. And it's about finding what you like. So yeah, these seem to be quite popular. Someone bought one from me who runs a guitar shop in Germany for, and they won't tell me who it is, but a German rock guitarist. Now, I don't really know many German rock guitarists. <laughs> I don't know any, so I don't know who it is. But apparently he really wanted one to show his roadie to claim that he'd broken it somehow 
in the past. I also like the idea of it being delivered to someone's house in the post and looking a bit broken. So, so I'm making things that are additions. Um, one of the things that Felix said she liked is I've been making bases where I route into the body and then embed in, in resin broken glass. So, so it really catches the light when you're on stage, but because of the way it's embedded in the resin, it's quite smooth, you're not going to cut yourself. Um, someone's just approached me and asked me to make a, a fretboard of broken glass, and I'm really struggling to come up with a way of doing that safely, where it won't hurt your <laughs> fingers or break the, the strings, but anyway. Um, and then this is one, uh, so the other thing I'm doing, as well as the additions and the one-offs, is trying to make guitars specifically for people where they come to me with an idea and this is a guitar that I made for um, a band called the Wild Hearts who this year it was the 20th anniversary of one of their albums and this was the logo that was on the album so I kind of made the guitar looking like that I think I have one picture of him maybe playing it live there so it's, it's quite nice to come someone to come to me with an idea and then make something specifically for them. So that's the other thing I'm quite interested in. That's the route I'd rather go down in the long run. But it's just a way of taking my artwork, making something that I feel quite passionate about, and trying to make something that other people hopefully feel passionate about as well. Um, so the two that I have in my studio that I didn't quite get finished that are science fiction related are this one, which is a Terminator inspired guitar, but it's made on the body of the same model guitar that Slash from Guns N' Roses used in the video for a song called You Could Be Mine that was the song from the Terminator 2 soundtrack. So I was trying to kind of make a link to that so someone might get that reference and like it. And then kind of that steampunk kind of feeling of, which is quite fashionable at the moment, of um, cog work, etc. The, this one's meant to be a bit Mad Max kind of inspired. Um, this one though has a bit of metal on it but it's mainly made of wood that I've carved and cut. I have a few that I've made out of bits of um, metal, so old engine parts from motorbikes and they look great but they're so heavy that they're really just not practical to play for any length of time. Well actually some old Les Pauls are really heavy so maybe it's similar to that. So the reason I went with the solid bodies to start with is my background as an artist was originally sculpture and a lot of that was um, casting and wood carving and with a solid body it's really easy to carve and yeah, yeah. change the shape. Um, I also had done a course at the um, John Cass School at the London Met which was in making acoustic guitars and I realised making from scratch was really time consuming but I'm really open to customising anything so customising an acoustic guitar is just as fun as doing electric guitar even though it is hollow I mean that gives you more scope for potentially cutting into it and putting things in it. Um, the, I mean, the thing is, uh, for some of them like this, the sound's not really affected by what's gone on to it. But some of the guitars that I'm making, the, the sound would be affected slightly if you're cutting into it, making holes into an acoustic guitar. But then I'm a, w whenever I played live bass and guitar, I always used to use lots of um, effects units and effects modelling so kind of in a way I feel like as long as you've got a strong signal coming from the guitar if you're going for something that's really about the looks as long as the signal's strong you have a lot of control after the signal's gone out of the guitar with how to edit it. I don't know if you can see that very well but this is one where I've drilled holes into it and using the same technique as embedding the glass in the resin I've embedded insects that I've uh, bought taxidermid insects. So somebody's just asked me to do something like this with piranhas so I've been on eBay looking at freeze-dried and taxidermid piranhas. But yeah, and, and, and back to the uh, kind of acoustic idea, someone's just asked me to do something with a zither. So I'm quite excited by that. I'm not excited about stringing it. A zither is a stringed instrument that uh, I, th I think they're only played flat on a table. I don't know if they've ever played upright. They're wooden. They've got a lot of strings on it. It's a bit like a, it looks a bit like a harp. Yeah. But also, I, I try to sometimes describe it as a harp on a on a board, but yeah. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you know the Third Man? The film The Third Man. Yeah. I think the soundtrack for that's all played in the zither. Yeah. It's got a very unique sound. Great. Well, maybe I'll leave these out if anyone wants to oh, no, have a look at them. Really good. Well done. Great. That's okay. Thank you. Daniel, I was going to say that Daniel um, brought in.
play because he came. Is it a member of Squid's? Well, actually, he's not a member of Squid's band, but he came in with Squid as a guest guitarist and brought the one with the eyeballs, and it's it absolutely sounded fabulous. So, um, <laughs> so that was so. Now I'm trying to customize with quite uh, expensive guitars or more expensive guitars, but this was made with quite a cheap Telecaster, and actually with a lot of cheap instruments. It, then they're actually not that bad at all. It's just they've been quickly put together in a shop and with a little bit of care, a little bit of readjustment of the neck, sometimes change out the electronics, they sound really good. So, you so it doesn't take much work. Sound by sticking some eyeballs, yeah, well, everything sounds better with eyeballs yeah. stuff on it. Yeah, so it was, it was inspired by the old TV series, The Trapdoor, mm -hmm. which some yeah. people might remember. Yeah. There's something down there, that one. But it seemed to fit. So. Squid and the Krakens is the name of the band, and because it had a tentacle on it, it seemed to fit. So that's why it was used. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and you'll be able to hear Squid's um, albums with the um, Stem Master right now, so you should be able to hear that. Um, thank you. Great, thank pleasure. Thank you very much. Anybody got any more questions? Well, uh, Daniel's gonna, I think Daniel's going to be here in chat, so. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Great, thank you.